So we're just gonna go over airspace in this particular video. There's a lot to unpack on these, so I'm trying to make them into smaller segments to make it a little more digestible. So let's dive in. We have class B, C, D, E, and G. There's no F. A is way up above uh, 18,000 feet, mean sea level. That's where like the cruising altitude of like the commercial jets go. Right here we have the B. Class B airspace is this solid blue line here. We have multiple blue lines, and that's because we have these different shelves, they're called. We'll go over that in just a second, but let's focus on this. So you have this inner line here, and this is for Boston. Let me zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier to see. So this is for Boston International Airport. Class B airspace are for the big boy airports. That's the um, like Boston, LAX, JFK, all those big airports are gonna be class B airspace. We have these inner circles. So you have these start here with this, uh, this inner circle here. Then you have this space and then another circle and then a space and you have this other circle, but it's actually uh, not just one straight up circle. You see there's another line right here. This can get a little tricky, especially with all this other gobbledygook going on in here, all this yellow and all these other little symbols. Um, just be aware that there are different sections. They're not all concentric circles. The test is gonna to try to trick you up. When I talk about the different shelves, let me get you over here. This is the study guide for the FAA. I mentioned this in my study guide video, which I'll link up here. If we look at class B, we have this here, which is this the tighter circle, which is where the airport is right here, right in the center. And then you go up and you hit the next shelf. You'll hear a lot of people say the upside down wedding cake. And that's because it starts small and then it gets bigger as you go up. OK, uh, so when we're talking about shelves, that's what we're talking about. So if we go back over here to our sectional chart, you're going to see this is that inner circle that we were talking about. And there's the airport. So it's going to start at the surface here, going up to 7000 feet. And then you go up to the next shelf. So you're going up into that uh, wedding cake. That next section there is 2000 feet is where uh, the airspace starts to 7000 feet. And then out here, 3,000 feet to 7,000 feet. And then over here in that weird jet that we have is 4,000 feet to 7,000 feet. The top of this Class B airspace is 7,000 feet. Now, if we jump over to the Class C airspace, that was Class B with the blue solid line. Class C is solid magenta line. Inner circle here is surface to 4,300 feet. So you can see it starts uh, the shelf. The top shelf is lower. And then out here, it's 2,500 feet to 4,300 feet. Same thing over here. But this is where it gets kind of tricky. I had one like this on my test for Texas, and I almost tripped up because I didn't see this little section here that was cut off. So you have a little section in here that's very easy to miss, uh, 1,500 feet to 4,300 feet. And then on the other side, it's 2,000 feet to 4,300 feet. Okay, so just make sure you keep an eye out for that. Then you go over here to the class D airspace, class Delta. So you have this blue dashed line is class D. These are smaller airports and class D airports often will have operating hours when the traffic control tower ATC is manned. And then when it's not, then it'll change to class E or, or G airspace. It depends, you have to check on that. This doesn't have that surface to 7,000 or anything uh, because it just tells you right here, it goes up to 2,600 feet. This little blue dash square line has the 26 inside of it. Just know that that goes up to 2,600 feet from the surface. This one has that little like jet that uh, comes out because there's another little regional airport right there. That's in class E airspace, which we'll go over in a second. The dashed magenta line here is for class E airspace that's controlled from the surface on up. Outside of that, it's usually 700 feet above ground level. As soon as you go outside of this faded transitionary line, then you're entering into class G airspace, which is uncontrolled. There is specialized airspace that you're gonna have to know, especially for the test. Um, if you go back to that study guide, go down a few pages, you're gonna be able to see it. You're gonna have prohibited areas, which have this blue hash mark here, and that's uh, areas that you're not allowed to go into. Restricted airspace, you can get into restricted airspace, but you are gonna need 
prior authorization. So if you keep on going down here, you have warning areas which act like prohibited airspace, but the US government doesn't have regulation over it. Uh, then you have military operations areas, which you don't need prior authorization for in general, but you do need to exercise extreme caution. The military is doing special stuff in there. Okay. Um, then you have alert areas and those are typically, sometimes you'll have like training, like regular civilian training, uh, with a lot of aircraft going on. You just need to be on alert and just know stuff is going on over there. You have uh, controlled firing areas, which there's things going on and they're supposed to yield the right away to you. So it's typically not labeled in here. So make sure you check out that study guide. It's from the FAA. So you know, the information is good. Um, I'm going to link it down in the description below. I'm going to make another one or maybe even two videos on sectional charts to go over the smaller things uh, like VFR checkpoints and towers. You're going to need to know those for the test. So make sure you subscribe and click that little notification bell so that you're notified when those do pop up. I do have a couple other videos on part 107. So if those are something you're interested in, I'll link those in the description also below. Until next time, fly safe and be good to each other. If I don't see you again, uh, fly and be safe. No, that's not right. Until next time, fly safe and be good to each other. Yeah, okay.